Okay. In our video series on infectious medicine, in this video, we'll be talking about infective endocarditis. We'll discuss it. What is infective endocarditis? What is the presentation of infective endocarditis? What causes it? And how do you investigate it? How do you treat it step by step? First of all, what is infective endocarditis? Infective endocarditis is colonization of the heart valve with microbial organism, resulting in the formation of friable infected vegetations and valve injury. Infective endocarditis is the infection of the heart valves by microbial organisms that results in the formation of friable infected vegetations in the heart and ultimately resulting in valve injury. The classical presentation that you would see in infective endocarditis is that the patient would be having fever and with that fever when you put steth on the heart you would listen to a new murmur that murmur was not present before and that patient is having a new murmur with that patient is having a fever you should suspect infective endocarditis in that patient infection of the heart walls this is a picture showing infective endocarditis and look at the vegetations present in the heart wall look at the destruction of the heart walls Coming to the presentation of infective endocarditis. Presentation of infective endocarditis, if the patient is having a native heart valve, it can be either acute or subacute. In acute, patient will be having a rapid progression of disease, rapid progression of symptoms. Within days and weeks, patient will be having high-grade fever and there will be more damage to the heart valve. Acute disease occurs, rapid disease occurs if the patient is having a healthy heart valve and it is most commonly caused by staph aureus. The disease will be severe, the disease will be rapid, and it will be caused by Staph aureus. Other organisms include group P strep, but Staph aureus is the most common. And if it is Staph aureus, the patient might be having a history of either IV drug abuse because IV drug abuse causes infective endocarditis with Staph aureus, or patient will be having infected cannulas in place. In subacute, subacute patient will be having slow insidious onset of disease from weeks to months patient will be having slow insidious disease and the symptoms will be way more milder than acute form. Patient will be experiencing low grade fever, dyspnea, back pain but the symptoms will be mild. And remember, subacute infection occurs in the walls that are already damaged or if the patient is having congenital heart defects. In those patients, there is subacute disease versus in acute disease where it infects the healthy walls compared with subacute where it infects the already damaged heart wall or the heart walls with congenital defects. It is caused by viridin straps, hesic organism, and enterococci. So, subacute has slow onset, infects the already damaged heart or the heart walls with congenital defects, and viridin straps and hesic and enterococci. Coming to prosthetic valve endocarditis, if the patient had a history of heart valve replacement and a prosthetic heart valve is placed, that prosthetic heart valve is at risk of infection. The infection of the heart valve can be early onset if within one year of replacement of heart valve, patient gets infection of the prosthetic valve. It can be either late onset in which after one year of prosthetic heart valve replacement, patients get infection. And remember, the most important cause of prosthetic valve endocarditis infection of the prosthetic valve is Staphylococcus epidermidis. Staphylococcus epidermidis is the top cause of infection of prosthetic heart walls. Coming to the diagnosis of infective endocarditis. In the diagnosis of infective endocarditis, remember the two most important investigations. One, blood cultures. The other one, echocardiography. In blood cultures, we want to see the bacteria which is causing destruction of the heart wall. And we also want to see that that bacteria is sensitive to which drug so that that antibiotic can be given to treat the patient. And in echocardiography, we see the heart wall vegetation that how much that heart wall is damaged and to confirm our diagnosis of infective endocarditis. So these are the two most important investigations. Blood cultures are taken in three sets of samples from different venipuncture sites and it is taken before the start of empiric antibiotic therapy. Coming to echocardiography, in echocardiography, transesophageal echocardiography in which you get inside the esophagus with the help of endoscope and you look at the heart through esophagus, it is the most accurate test for infective endocarditis and it is 90% sensitive. It is the most accurate test, transesophageal echocardiography. Transthoracic echocardiography is done 
through chest of the patient it is directly done through the chest of the patient and it is not as sensitive as trans esophageal echocardiography in which you go into the esophagus trans thoracic echocardiography is less sensitive and it is 75% accurate but since trans esophageal echocardiography is an invasive procedure in which you have to get inside the esophagus therefore it is not preferred usually trans thoracic echocardiography which is not an invasive procedure in which you directly do echocardiography over the chest is enough for the diagnosis so it is the best initial test which is most commonly performed for the diagnosis of infective endocarditis but if in exam if they ask you the most accurate test choose trans esophageal echocardiography and if they ask best initial test choose trans thoracic echocardiography and remember in real life trans thoracic echocardiography is performed most of the times and in very specific cases you go for trans esophageal echocardiography in echocardiography you look for valvular vegetations you look for prosthetic valve dehiscence the detachment of prosthetic heart valve and remember an important point in all patients with infective endocarditis you must perform ecg if you suspect infective endocarditis you should do ecg and you should look for new conduction abnormalities conduction abnormalities like av block bundle branch block why because if the patient is having av block or new bundle branch block it shows that the patient has now developed perivalvular or myocardial abscess and that patient will need now surgery you need to do cardiac mri you need to do trans esophageal echocardiography now these are the cases in which you go for trans esophageal echocardiography so you do ecg look for conduction block and look for the abscesses coming to the modified dukes criteria modified dukes criteria is used for the diagnosis of infective endocarditis and it has a major criteria and a minor criteria major criteria is fulfilled if the patient it has typical organisms typical organisms like staphylococcus aureus streptococci if you see typical organisms on two separate blood cultures that fulfills the major criteria if the patient has characteristic echo finding you see valvular vegetations that is a characteristic echo finding for infective endocarditis if you see new valvular regurge if you see a new valvular regurge in a patient who already had no heart problems that new valvular regurg fulfills the major criteria and that patient will have infective endocarditis in the minor criteria if the patient has fever it fulfills the minor criteria if the patient has vascular abnormalities what are vascular abnormalities in in infective endocarditis basically these vegetations that are present on the heart they get dislodged and then they travel in blood and then they get stuck in the small blood vessels of hands and arms and nails and resulting in rupture of the blood vessels that is called as vascular phenomena in immunological phenomena in immunologic phenomena basically the immune system results in form formation of small microthrombi microclots those microclots are formed in heart and those microclots travel in the blood and then they block the blood vessels resulting in hemorrhages and phenomena and plexes of symptoms that you see in the patient what are these vascular and immunological phenomena now we'll discuss that in the immunologic and vascular phenomena you would see osler node these are the painful nodules that form on the palms because these microthrombi that are formed in the heart they dis get dislodged and they get stuck in the small capillaries of the hands janeway lesions janeway lesions are pain less red hemorrhagic patches on the palm osler nodes are pain full and janeway lesions are pain less these are hemorrhages that are present on the palm these are called as janeway lesions in the eyes when this clot get inside the eyes in the retinal vessels they will result in retinal hemorrhages and the classical presentation that you would see is that patient would be having a a pale or white center surrounded by a hemorrhage a pale or a white center surrounded by a hemorrhage a pale and a white center surrounded by a hemorrhage so that is called as roth spot on retina you can also appreciate splinter hemorrhage in patients splinter hemorrhages are hemorrhages that occur in nails because of the blockage of these vessels by vegetation by emboli these are linear red brown streaks splinter hemorrhages on nails
so these are vascular and immunologic phenomena present in patients and if these are present that fulfills the minor criteria and if the blood cultures are positive but they are not the specific organisms that you are looking for they are not fulfilling the major criteria they are not the specific organisms that cause infective endocarditis but cultures have grown something that fulfills the minor criteria and if the patient is having any predisposing risk factors like iv drug use heart abnormality that also fulfills the minor criteria that that patient is prone to get infective endocarditis now modified dukes criteria basically uses this major and minor criteria for the diagnosis how do we use this major and minor criteria now we'll discuss it modified dukes criteria says that patient has a definite diagnosis of infective endocarditis if you find two or more than two of the major criteria if you find one or more of the major criteria and three minor criteria that is also a definitive diagnosis it means that out of the major criteria you get one thing and out of the minor you get three that is a definitive diagnosis that a patient is having infective endocarditis or you have five or more than five of the minor criteria so that patient is having definitive infective endocarditis patient can have possible infective endocarditis if he fulfills one major and one minor criteria or three or more than three minor criteria and diagnosis of infective endocarditis is rejected if the definitive and possible criteria is not fulfilled or there is firm alternate diagnosis present so you have the major criteria points you have the minor criteria points and according to those points you would say that whether patient has definitive diagnosis possible diagnosis or rejected diagnosis that is the modified dukes criteria coming to the treatment of infective endocarditis in the treatment of infective endocarditis it depends that whether that patient is having native heart valve or that patient is having prostatic heart valve and then in native heart valve if the patient is having acute bacterial endocarditis you use vancomycin 15 mg per kg iv bd with cefepime 1 to 2 g iv every 8 to 12 hours in sub acute endocarditis you use vancomycin 15 mg per kg iv bd with ampicillin and sulbectam 3 g iv 6 hourly and if the patient has prostatic valve endocarditis and that endocarditis was within one year of placement of uh, heart valve it means that it is an early onset infection you use vancomycin in combination with gentamicin gentamicin is a very important drug if someone asks you about the two most important drugs used in infective endocarditis treatment you should answer vancomycin with gentamicin venc plus gent are the main drugs for the treatment of infective endocarditis other than that you can use cefepime rifampin can also be used if it is a late onset infective endocarditis it means that after one year of placement of prostatic valve patient got infection you use vancomycin with ceftriaxone 2 g iv or im every 24 hourly surgery surgery should be considered if the patient is having prostatic heart valve because that prostatic heart valve can get detached and if the patient is having signs of heart failure if the patient has not developed abscess if you see conduction blocks on ecg suspect abscess if the patient is having fungal endocarditis in these conditions patient needs valvular repair and valvular replacement and surgery is performed for infective endocarditis now coming to prophylaxis of infective endocarditis now who are the patients who get prophylaxis for infective endocarditis prophylaxis of infective endocarditis is given to the patients who have two things they have underlying cardiac defect and now they are going for any dental procedure any procedure that can result in infection of the heart walls like dental cleaning and patient has underlying cardiac defect like prostatic valves unrepaired cyanotic heart diseases previous endocarditis transplant status in these patients if these patients are undergoing dental cleaning or any procedure like that that uh, makes them prone to get infective endocarditis you must give them prophylaxis with amoxicillin another important point that is highly tested on exams is that if you find strep bovis as a cause of infective endocarditis the next best step would be to go for colonoscopy because strep bovis is associated with colon cancer you please you of the colon so you do colonoscopy if you find strep bovis as a cause of infective endocarditis this is a checklist that you can use 
to manage a patient with infective endocarditis whenever a patient with infective endocarditis you should approach with abcd you should look for sep signs of sepsis if the patient is having sepsis you should manage that i have talked about sepsis management in detail in my video on management of sepsis and shock you can check out the link in the description you manage the acute heart failure you manage the bradycardia the heart block you perform the clinical evaluation when you stabilize the patient you take the history you screen for extra cardiac manifestation of infective endocarditis you establish iv access you get the blood for cultures and routine labs you perform echo you apply the modified dukes criteria you obtain ecg look for conduction block you consult the infectious disease department so that they guide you about the empiric antibiotic therapy you start the empiric antibiotic therapy after you have taken the samples for blood cultures and you screen for clinical features of metastatic infection this infection spreading to the other organs identify patients who need indications of surgery and then when the results are back you can switch the patient to targeted uh, antibiotic therapy you have to admit that patient and you screen and monitor for complications so this is a checklist that you can use to manage a patient in the hospital with infective endocarditis in summary we talked about what is infective endocarditis we divided it into the causes acute and sub acute you have to do blood cultures and echocardiography transthoracic best initial transesophageal echo most accurate major and minor criteria of modified dukes criteria how do you use modified dukes criteria native valve endocarditis treatment prostatic heart valve endocarditis treatment we talked about the indications of surgery and we talked about the prophylaxis with amoxicillin and if the patient has strep bovis the next step is to go for colonoscopy to look for colon cancer if you liked my video please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on infectious medicine and emergency medicine the link of those videos is given in the description below thank you very much